Rejoice in the Lord. Again I say, rejoice ye. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing nor trouble, but in all things by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Rejoice ye in the Lord, and again I say rejoice ye. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, nor trouble, but in all things, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, who at thy first coming did send thy messenger to prepare thy way before thee, grant that the ministers and stewards of thy mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready thy way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at thy second coming to judge the world we may be found an acceptable people in thy sight, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life, in which thy Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the quick and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal, through him who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, now and ever. The epistle is written in the fourth chapter of the first epistle of blessed Paul to the Corinthians, beginning at the first verse. Brethren, let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. I know nothing against myself, yet am I not hereby justified? But he that judgeth me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time, until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise of God. Here endeth the epistle. Show thyself, O Lord, thou that sittest upon the cherubim, stir up thy strength and come. Hear, O thou shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a sheep, 
Alleluia, alleluia. Stir up thy strength, O Lord, and come and help us. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel is written in the 11th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the second verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which ye do and hear. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he who, whoever shall not be offended in me. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitude concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Good morning to all following us virtually this morning from the Cathedral Church of St. John the Evangelist in Victoria, British Columbia. It is the third Sunday in Advent, Gaudate Sunday. Rejoice! The Holy Mysteries are offered to the honor and glory of Almighty God in prayer that we may know the joy and peace of our Savior Jesus Christ 
as we prepare to celebrate again the joy of his birth among us. In our cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Catholic Church of Canada, which is the Canadian province of the worldwide traditional Anglican Church. For our bishops ordinary, me, God's unworthy servant of the Diocese of Canada West, my brother Bishop, Bishop Craig Botterill of the Diocese of Canada East, for all our clergy, for the lay readers, for those who serve on vestry and parish council, for all the laity. That God may continue to bless, guide, and prosper his church in this vineyard. We remember in our prayers today the sick, the sorrowful, the suffering, and the dying. Committing to God's mercy and care, Sonia Archibald, Sandra Oates, Father Doug Oates, Peter Downs, Doug Crawley, Donna Moore, Kelly Quinn, Don Easton, Terry Huberts, Jim Ducarn, for Pat, Colin Rich, Jenny, Pedro Vahio in Extremis, Bishop Stephen Strawn, recovering from surgery for cancer, for Paul Dyfer, Vince Pollitt, those suffering from the COVID-19 virus, those suffering too from the anxiety, isolation, and loneliness caused by this pandemic, for all the homeless, for the unemployed, for all who have desired our prayers, unworthy as we are. We pray for Paul Nicholson, my able server this day, who will celebrate his 14th birthday tomorrow, that God may bless and guide him as his years increase. We remember in our prayers the men and women of Her Majesty's Canadian Forces serving at home and abroad. We pray too for the men and women who serve as police officers and first responders, for the doctors, nurses, and health care professionals caring for the sick, praying God's blessing and protection upon them and their families. Finally, of your charity, I bid your prayers to the souls of the faithful departed, remembering especially those of our family, friends, benefactors, and fellow parishioners who have gone before us, marked with a sign of faith and all whose years mind occurs at this time. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. Amen. Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee, and speak to thee in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. One of the most well-known professors of communications theory, the Canadian Marshall McLuhan, famously declared, the medium is the message, meaning that the means of communication form part of the medium itself, and that medium is the message, and is therefore as important as the message itself. Translating this into Christian terms, this means that the messenger, as is important to the message of Christ's saving truth, as the words of the gospel itself. It also means that you and I are that medium. We are the messengers of Christ. We are the face of Christ, the image of Christianity to those we encounter each and every day. Now just think about that for a moment. You and I are messengers of the gospel of Jesus Christ to all we encounter, and may in fact, in some cases, be the only one they encounter and come to know. The question posed by the disciples of John the Baptist to Jesus, art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? This may well be asked of you and me by any that we may meet. It is our calling, our responsibility to witness to Christ, to be the living face of his gospel. This is not an easy task. But thanks be to God, we are not charged with presenting the message without the means to do so. We may be the medium, but the source of our message the source of our communication is the Holy Spirit. 
in his great commission to his disciples and apostles and through them to his church universal, our Lord declared that he would be with his church for all time. Jesus assured his disciples that the Holy Spirit would lead them into all truth and would remind them of all he had said and done, and that this same Holy Spirit would dwell within them as the power and medium of God. It is this indwelling Spirit of God, along with our commitment to the truth in Jesus Christ, that enables us to be effective messengers of the gospel. Each day at Matins and Evensong, we pray the suffrage, O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. It is a prayer, a petition, that God will continue to be active in our lives, enabling us to be ministers of Christ, and stewards of the mysteries of God. God promises to do his part, and we in turn must do our part in presenting the authentic, life-giving, saving message of Jesus Christ in our own time and through our own lives, however imperfect that may be. As faithful, albeit imperfect Christians, we are the medium that conveys the message. We are the gospel to those we meet, which begs the question, would I recognize Jesus? Would I see and know his gospel, his saving truth, if I were to meet myself? Is my life, my conduct, my outward vesture and inward spirit that of a messenger of Christ, a faithful disciple of Jesus, or do they look for another? In the sacraments, God instituted the medium by which to convey his saving grace through outward and visible signs. So too, in calling us to be messengers in and to the world, God would have each of us be outward and visible signs of his inward and spiritual grace. And we can only accomplish this calling if we place ourselves, our witness, totally and completely in his hands. Each of us can be effective messengers of the gospel of Christ if we are ready to commit ourselves to the task at hand in the real life circumstances we find ourselves, whether we be clergy or laity, parent or grandparent, married, single or widow, each of us, regardless of our station in life, are given unique opportunities to witness to Christ, to witness his presence in our lives, his forgiveness when we fail, his patience when we struggle, his love when we feel alone or hurt, his enabling grace and guiding spirit as we face the challenges that life affords. However, if we are to take advantage of these opportunities, then we must prepare ourselves to be stewards of the mysteries of Christ which means we need to know the life of a Christian, to know Jesus Christ and his saving gospel. It is not enough to simply wing it. We need to get it right. We need to know the truth, to know the message of Christ and be confident in our witness. As St. Paul wrote, that we may open our mouths boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. You and I are the messengers of Christ today. You and I have been commissioned to, by Christ to be his outward and visible signs of the grace and salvation those searching for peace and fulfillment will only find in the Savior Jesus Christ. The season of Advent which is upon us, 
is a season of patience and preparation, a time of waiting and preparing for the coming of the Lord. It is also the season when we hear again the clarion call of St. John the Baptist, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. As we now look to the coming Christmas season, when the world hears again the good news of the birth of the Savior, let each of us do our part to be true messengers of the gospel and faithful stewards of the mysteries of Christ. A waiting, anxious, sometimes frightened world needs to hear the words of hope, comfort, and joy which Jesus Christ brings to all peoples and all nations. Even so, come Lord Jesus. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Lord be with you. With thy spirit. Let us pray. O Lord, thou art become gracious unto thy land. Thou hast turned away the captivity of Jacob. Thou hast forgiven the offense of thy people. salvation humbly beseeching thy mercy that it may send before Jesus we throne and savor for our salvation and for that of the whole world. Amen. And on this day with a humble heart may we be accepted of your Lord. And so let our sacrifice be offered on thy sight this day with pleasing unto thee, O God. Amen. Come of thou font of holiness, mighty eternal God, and bless this sacrifice and our prayer before thy holy name. Amen. I will wash my hands in the sincere so shall I go into thy name, that I may show the voice of thy giving and tell of all thy wondrous works. Lord, I love the habitation of thy house and the place where thy honor dwelleth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Receive a holy trinity, this oblation which we offer unto thee in memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. To the honor of Blessed Mary, of the Virgin, Blessed John the Baptist, the Holy Apostles, Peter, and all these, and of all the saints, that it may avail for their honor and for our salvation, and may they vouchsafe to see for us in heaven as never we keep on earth with the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Brethren, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable unto God the Father Almighty. Grant, we beseech thee, O Lord, that the continual oblation of this our bounden duty and service may ever avail for the fulfillment of the institution of this sacred mystery and for the accomplishment in us of the wondrous work of thy salvation. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Let us pray for Christ's holy Catholic Church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name 
may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to lead all nations in the way of righteousness, and so to guide and direct their governors and rulers, that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. And grant unto thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, <coughs> and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially to me, thine unworthy servant, and those bishops in communion with me, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and living word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with me heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially those for whom our prayers are desired. We remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. Beseeching thee to grant them a place of refreshment, light, and peace. And we bless thy holy name for all who in life and death have glorified thee. Chief of the glorious and most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, the holy patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, Saint John the Evangelist, and all thy saints, beseeching thee to give us grace, that rejoicing in their fellowship, we may follow their good examples, and with them be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead the new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name through jesus christ our lord amen almighty god our heavenly father who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul saith, this is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, 
Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, Creator and Preserver of all things, because Thou hast given salvation unto mankind through the coming of Thy well-beloved Son in great humility, and by Him will make all things new, when He shall come again in His glorious majesty to judge the world in righteousness. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify Thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father who of thy tender mercy does give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and it institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death, until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take heed, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we, thy humble servants with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit all honor and glory be unto thee O Father Almighty world without end
Let us pray. As our Savior Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Deliver us, O Lord, we beseech thee from all evils, past, present, and to come. And at the intercession of thy Lord, Sarah, Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and thy blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and Andrew, and all the saints, faith and peace in our days, that by the help of thy unveiling mercy, we'll be free from sins and saved from all distress. Through the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, Grant us thy peace. O Lord Jesus Christ, who did send in thine apostles, peace that is with you, my peace I give unto you. Regard not my sins, but the faith of thy church. And thou say to grant thy peace and unity according to thy will, who live as one as God, who obey this world without end. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that taketh away the sin of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take me this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of this mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, we beseech thee, and grant that the heavenly assistance of thy holy mysteries may so cleanse us from all our iniquities that we may be made ready worthily to keep thy coming festival. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. The Lord be with you. With thy spirit. Depart in peace. Thanks be to God. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always.